Good morning, everyone. Good morning. And good morning to those of you who are joining us online. My brothers and sisters in Christ, the peace of the Lord be with you. Please turn and share God's peace with one another. <coughs> Our service this morning begins on page 355 in the Book of Common Prayer. Hallelujah! Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Together, Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whom truly to know is everlasting life, grant us so perfectly to know your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the way, the truth, and the life, that we may steadfastly follow his steps in the way that leads to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of God's holy word. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Now the apostles and the believers who were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also accepted the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised believers criticized him, saying, why did you go to the uncircumcised men and eat with them? Then Peter began to explain it to them, step by step, saying, I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance I saw a vision. There was something like a large sheet coming down from heaven, being lowered by its four corners and it came close to me. <clears throat> As I looked at it closely, I saw four-footed animals, beasts of prey, reptiles, and birds of the air. I also heard a voice saying to me, get up, Peter, kill and eat. 
But I replied, By no means, Lord, for nothing profane or unclean has ever entered my mouth. But a second time the voice answered from heaven, What God has made clean, you must not call profane. This happened three times. Then everything was pulled up again to heaven. At that very moment, three men sent to me from Caesarea arrived at the house where we were. The Spirit told me to go with them and not to make a distinction between them and us. These six brothers also accompanied me and we entered the man's house. He told us how he had seen the angel standing in his house and saying, send to Joppa and bring Simon who is called Peter. He will give you a message by which you and your entire household will be saved. And as I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them just as it had upon us at the beginning. And I remembered the word of the Lord, how he said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If then God gave them the same gift that he gave us, when we believed in Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I could hinder God? When they heard this, they were silenced, and they praised God, saying, then God has given even to the Gentiles the repentance that leads to life. The word of the Lord. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 148, beginning on page 805 in your Book of Common Prayer or in your bulletin. We will say this in unison. Alleluia. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him, all you angels of his. Praise him, all his hawks. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, heavens of heavens, and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded, and they were created. He made them stand fast forever and ever. He gave them a law which shall not pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters in all deeps. Fire and hail, salt and fog winds doing his will, mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild beasts and all cattle, creeping things and white birds, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and rulers, young men and maidens, old and young together, let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name only is ex. His splendor is over earth and heaven. He has raised up strength for his people and praise for all his loyal servants, the children of Israel, a people who are near to him. Alleluia. A reading from the Revelation to John. I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See. The home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them. They will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them, and he will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also he said, write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, 
the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. At the Last Supper, when Judas had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. <coughs> Please be seated. On the last day of our pilgrimage, we visited two towns mentioned in today's reading from Acts. Peter, returning to Jerusalem from a coastal town where we began and ended our pilgrimage, 
a town called Joppa, or modern-day Jaffa, which sits just on the outskirts of Tel Aviv. Staying at Simon the Tanner's house on the sea, he has a vision. And in that vision, as we heard, he is confronted by God, telling him, law does not usurp the will of God. Why is this vision so important in the ministry of Peter? While Peter was a staunch follower of Jesus, like Jesus, he was also a Jew. And as a Jew, he believed certain things are necessary to be righteous in the eyes of God. For Peter, to follow Jesus meant one had to follow the long-held traditions of the faith, just as Jesus had, just as he was. One of those traditions was that certain foods were good to eat. Others were not. Called to lead and feed the sheep of Jesus, who Peter interprets to be the people of Israel, as far as Peter is concerned, any Gentile who refused to adhere to the Jewish traditions was lost and not worthy of his time, let alone God's grace. It seems he forgot the grace that Jesus offered to everyone, both Jew and non-Jew. <coughs> In those days, Jaffa, like Caesarea to the north, <coughs> was a seaport. Anything going to Jerusalem likely came through one or the other. They were type of crossroads of trade and travel. And we don't know why Peter went to Jaffa in the first place. Maybe it was to travel across the Med, or maybe it was just to simply visit with people at the synagogue there in Jaffa. But what we do know is that while he was there, his eyes were open to a truth he had not been able to see before. That truth? When Jesus told the disciples to love one another, to love their neighbors, he meant everyone. Not just those in the inner circle, not just those like them, but everyone. In a way, the eyes... Our eyes were opened there in Jaffa as well, as, as we, like Peter, were prepared to begin our journey in faith through the Holy Land. What would we see along the way? Well, that was going to be different for each of us. As each of us had our own idea based on Scripture and, yeah, frankly, the local news of what Israel and the holy sites would be like. But we wouldn't do it alone. Like Peter, we would journey with those God sent to us to show us the way. In our case, it would be Gasson and George, two spirit-filled people who met us at the airports and brought us to Jaffa for lunch, where we'd begin our service around the table. It was here in Jaffa, like the disciples walking along that road to Emmaus, the story of God's love for us would begin to unfold before our eyes. Our journey would take us to Galilee, on to Bethlehem, to Jerusalem, and eventually bring us right back to the place our journey began. <coughs> One of our last stops was the town of Caesarea by the sea. The town Peter left Jaffa for in order to meet with someone who before his vision, frankly, he would not have given the time of day. As we walked along the shores of the Mediterranean Sea, listening to the waves coming ashore, and among the ruins of what was the major Herodian seaport of the day, it was not hard to envision the life in those days. It was a hot day for us, 
probably the second hottest day we had. And that breeze coming off the Mediterranean just felt so wonderful. And one could see how the streets of the town were built to welcome that cooling effect. <clears throat> At one point in our journey there, we stood overlooking the pier, the first century pier on which Paul would later stand as he boards a boat on the way to Rome. We saw the excavated ruins of shops and homes and the palace of the Roman governor of Judea. We walked on ground that was once used for horse racing and sat in the restored theater. It is believed that Paul would make his speech to the people before being arrested. While we never saw a home marked Cornelius lived here, the man Jesus, uh, Peter went to go see, I still felt blessed to see the work of the Holy Spirit. Not just in the place or other places we had visited, <coughs> but in my fellow pilgrims. We had had a long journey. We walked and we walked <coughs> and we walked some more. By the last day, when we visited Caesarea, we were tired and ready to come home. Yet like Peter, <coughs> we would never be able to unsee what we had seen. God's grace in our midst. Nor could we forget the message of Peter's vision. That this grace is not just for us, but for all. While this is something for us to celebrate, our tiredness on that last day also reminded us that while this is God's desire, we're a long way from seeing it in reality. Not only in the Holy Land, but here in this country as well. We did get a glimpse of what is possible, though, as we listened to two fathers, Rami and Bassam, one an Israeli Jew, the other an Arab Muslim. Share their stories of loved ones lost to the violence that surrounded them. Yet despite their loss, their differences, they described one another as good friends. Sharing a story of hope and peace for all. <clears throat> Admitting the anger and hate they once held for the other, they now talked of what I can only describe of, or describe as, love. <clears throat> the love Jesus said we need to have for our neighbor, whoever they are. Well, this is not how they would describe it. In fact, they described it more about learning to respect the other for who they were people made in the image of God. To me, listening to their story of learning respect and, and relationship sounded an awful lot like love. Love that is unconditional simply because of who we are. God's beloved. Their story and the journey we undertook from place to place in the Holy Land Give me hope. Hope that the peace God offered to us through Jesus is still possible. At each place, in each story we heard, even in the villages and towns we would travel through, I sense God's grace as present. And if not visibly present, because of the poverty, the struggles that people were having, hoped for. Hoped for each in their own way. One sure way to help everyone know it, I believe, is to follow the example and journey of Peter. Letting go of our tendencies to separate the clean from the unclean those that we feel are worthy, and those we don't. 
to help our neighbor know something I believe our team of pilgrims learned from Rami and Bassam. And as they were reminded by Ghassan and George, and as we with them listen to the unfolding story Scripture tells us, that while none of us are worthy, we are all loved. And because we are, it is God's will that we love one another. Amen. Continuing on page 358 in the Book of Common Prayer. Let us stand and affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the <laughs> and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death. <laughs> And the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the... We believe in one holy church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world. For Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Scott, our bishop, Tom, our priest, Terry, our aspirant for the deaconate, in the Angle and Cycle of Prayer, we pray for the Scottish Episcopal Church, in the Diocesan Cycle of Prayer, Church of Our Savior, North Platte, Rev. Stephen Mazing, Good Shepherd of the Plains, Harrison Berg, Rev. Mark Slavey, Rev. Karen Anderson, Rev. Bob Man Mansrick, St. Hilda's Gimbal, St. Francis Scottsbluff, Rev. Mark Slavey, Rev. Bob Mansrick, the Rev. Karen Anderson, and in the DR, St. Timothy Church and St. John, the Evelist, Psych the Evelist Church. In the parish cycle of prayer, we pray for our coffee, our teams, for this gathering, and for all ministers and people. Pray for the church. I ask your prayers for our president, Joe Biden, our governor, Pete Ricketts, and for our all elected and appointed officials of the communities in which we live and are around the world. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor and the distraught for the sick, the hungry, and those who struggle to survive, and for those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of him. Pray that they might find find and be found by him. 
I ask your prayers for the departed. Are there any? Pray for those who have died. In our own congregation, I ask your prayers that God stays with and strengthens all those who are ill, especially Charlotte A. and Troy S. Are there others? I ask your prayers to lift up those with special concerns, especially Erica and Terry. Are there others? I ask your prayers and re remembrance today for those who serve our country at home and abroad, especially those who are in harm's way, especially Sarah F., Jonathan P. Are there others? Be with them and their families, Lord, to give them comfort and hope until they are once again reunited in peace. Watch over those in our community who travel, especially Jan S. Are there others? Keep them safe as only you can. We ask that you continue to pour out your blessing on those who are celebrating birthdays this week, especially Janice A., Cindy P., Brian W. Are there others? And those who are celebrating anniversaries, are there any? Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glor glorify Christ in our own day. Our Lord, O oh God, accept the favorite prayers of your people in the multitude of your mercies. Look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O oh lover of souls, and to you we give glory. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Let us confess our sins to God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, and by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy upon us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name, amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strength you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Almighty God, whose will it is to hold both heaven and earth in the peace of your kingdom, give peace to your church, peace among nations, peace in our homes, and peace in our hearts. All this we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us in offering and sacrifice to God.
Our service continues with Eucharistic Prayer A, found on page 361 in the Book of Common Prayer. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. <clears throat> by his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. <laughs> Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O oh Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and ending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day with all your saints, enter the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. Forgive the and lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on them in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving.
Continuing on page 366 in the Book of Common Prayer, let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. Now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. And may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. In the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Please be seated for our announcements. <coughs> so there's a couple in the uh, bulletin I'd like to highlight today. Um, Cindy is getting ready to pull the VBS program together. If you have some time for with a specific project, or you have some time to do some other things, not only reach out to Cindy, but on the bulletin board downstairs in the chapel hallway, there's a lot of little cards, and, and maybe you can grab one of those and do one little thing, or two little things, or three or four, you know, it keeps on going. <laughs> but we could use your help. Um, we, are, are, we are planning to advertise this more to the community this year, um, to get back into what we used to do, so please, uh, if you have some time, give Cindy a hand. If you can help her during that week, she would really love to talk to you. Um, UTO <laughs> boxes are out. We'll collect those in on June 12th. Um, yes, donations. You'll, you probably notice in the bulletin this year we're only doing uh, financial contributions. Uh, it has been harder and harder to get the cases of water to them and then with all the other things they were having during COVID at the time, it's just easier to send them money. And I believe they actually get a little discount when they buy in bulk that we can't get because of their nonprofit status. So please, if you would like to make a donation, just put yes in your memo line. Uh, Carol McLaughlin told us they had a rather successful uh, <laughs> blood drive yesterday. Not as successful as we would have had if we had had it on the day that we originally had it scheduled, but it was still a good day. The Red Cross was very blessed, and they said so. Attention to youth 12 to 18. If you have not yet signed up for the escape room that we have coming this Wednesday, please do so today. Once the list is, once today is over, the list is closed, um, and I will be reserving the escape room. Um, I need to know exactly how many people are coming, though, so please. This is free for all parish youth. And you can see there's a meeting next week. Um, let's see. We will do uh, the uh, youth activity here after the service. So Recognition Sunday, we'll do it after we've gone offline. Um, so please, after the closing hymn, just have a seat and we'll, we'll begin that pretty promptly. Let's see. We, we do have some birthdays and anniversaries. Is there, I, I saw one birthday girl. Is there a birthday boy downstairs at all? Well, come on down. <laughs> it's all right. Are there any other birthdays or anniversaries that didn't make it into the bulletin? <laughs> so anniversary as well or birthdays? Birthdays. Oh, anniversary, come on down. That's right, Friday. Friday the 13th was their anniversary, no less. Uh, there you go. And uh, they, Michelle got home just in time to enjoy some of it uh, with her husband. Please join me in the birthday prayer. Oh God, our times are in your hands. Look with favor, we pray, on these your servants as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness 
all the days of their life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. See, you're blessed. <laughs> so how many years? You both agreed on it. That's good. That's a good start. Would you all please join me in the anniversary prayer? O oh, gracious and ever-living God, look mercifully on these who have been joined together. Grant them your blessing and assist them with your grace that with fidelity and steadfast love <coughs> they may honor and keep their promises and vows through Jesus Christ our Savior who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. And happy anniversary and many blessings to you. Thank you. So the last comment I'll make, I turn it over to Allie for our, is all of our team members made it back from the Holy Land safe and sound. We had no problems over there, and I think we found it an time and uh, it just was very meaningful um, we a few years so if you didn't get the time, please get you on the short list for the next one Allie all yours Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.